Aûzu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Atiyallah, atiyallah rasul ulil amri minka. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeez wa da'eef, miskeen is alim wa jahan but for the grace of Allah Zawajjan that we are still in existence and Allah's rahmah inshaAllah to always dress us inshaAllah forgive us alhamdulillah. InshaAllah we, we cut off yesterday because of the connection for many questions that people were having so we can go over some of the questions tonight if there's any questions. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum Um Someone was asking yesterday, <coughs> Sayyidi can you please elaborate the maqam al-fardani? Hmm? <laughs> can you elaborate maqam al-fardani? Me and maqam al-fardani, the A'uzu Billahi min shaitan and Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, elaborate on maqam al-fardani from what, what is necessary to know is that it represents the station of the moon and uh, the reality of the Ghawth and the one who watches over this dunya that the awliya have a hierarchy from amongst the stars and then from the moon and they take the reflection from the sun that the sign upon the horizon a sign within themselves. And that one whom takes directly from the sun and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and becomes a common perfect reflection of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And what they want from us is to inspire the way of the Fardani. That Shams al-Arifin is, is a book in which is, is the teaching and the understanding of the twelfth month is from the uloom of the Fardani, from this maqam al-Fardani that is the highest reality of sainthood that takes its reflection from the reality of the sun. And the twelve months, each month is a dress in hijab, a parda in which the moon is traversing the reality of the sun and the moon teaches us to be nothing, to not have a ego, to take all the bombarding and the testing. Look at the surface of the moon. It's not like the earth in which every type of desire has grown upon it. The moon shows itself to be barren that it has taken so much pounding that nothing is growing on it. It means it has no desire, no dunya desire. And it's in a continuous uh, ocean of difficulty and uh, it keeps its course on the reflection of the sun and the nur and the reality of the sun. The sun is a source of light and the moon by its purity and its path is a reflection of the light. So, qamarun nurun wa shamsun diyahum, the shams is a diya is a source of light burning fire and that nobody can attain and that is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why we say Shams al-Arifin. It's the rising sun of, of knowledges and realities of the ones whom are seeking Allah's Divinely grace, Divinely lights and that's by Allah showing that, I show you on the horizon the greater because like in a lab it's easier to see the horizon and then teach about the reality of the horizon before you can teach about somebody's inside. You can't open them up and say, Here, here's your heart, here's your moon, here's your this, here's your light. So that's why they give the analogy of the outside. You see how Allah created creation in perfection and the light is supreme, the light is eternal and that you should make the whole course of your life is to traverse the light and that's why in the sama and everything the Ahlul Haqqaiq and Ahlul Tasawwuf they taught all the same reality in a different way of understanding it. 
the, the teaching of the sama was the same understanding is that your whole life has to traverse the heart and the heart is symbolic of the sun. If the student becomes lit through their practices and following their heart will become lit with an eternal light and Allah will begin the process of the shams. Means that their heart became the ocean of iman, became the ocean of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad as a result Prophet son and eternal light is now glowing within their heart and that is maqam al-iman. When that servant their heart is lit Allah doesn't ever extinguish it, it means they have reached their eternal lights. And that importance of that then is the nourishing of that light. Until that stage light and faith is very fragile, it's like a candle in the wind. You know how you have to guard your faith, you don't take yourself everywhere, you don't do every type of crazy thing, your faith will be blown away, will be extinguished. So whom Allah guides, you know when you have a, a spouse and you have somebody, a child or somebody who's attracted to these teachings, these are very rare. These are whom Allah is sending to leave the temporary candle but to achieve this maqam of iman and that's not everybody. And that's not 90% of the people in the mosque they say they have iman because they you know did Ramadan, that's nothing. This, this is a station through many trials and tribulations that they are taking a path and they have been inspired to take a path in which Allah wants to light their heart. And when that heart becomes lit with the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad this is maqam al-iman and the one whom has iman his heart like a fire, like a sun is burning. And the more his iman, the more his love, the more he's approaching Prophet with every type of difficulty his faith is growing stronger and stronger and stronger until his heart is like a full-blown sun. And they are walking more powerful suns on this earth than the sun in the sky because the sun in the sky is merely a reflection of that reality. Because walak al karamna Bani Adam is that Allah says, I have honoured Bani Adam, not I honoured the heavens. I honoured Bani Adam, whatever is in the heaven as an ornament is merely a sign. But what Allah gives to this creation of Adam and Eve if they should achieve that reality He gives them an eternal light, He gives them the eternal love of Sayyidina Muhammad Then you understand through faith if Allah lit your heart with faith, lit it with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad no, no doubt you begin to hear with Allah's hearing, you begin to see with Allah seeing. You touch with Allah's touch, you walk with Allah's walk means your step will be blessed. Anything you touch turns to gold, is blessed. Whatever you make du'a Allah already accepted it because Allah inspired the du'a to come through the heart of that servant. So then these are sons, they are carrying that light. And then Allah makes them to look to the moon to be nothing, to be nothing and turns their head to be like a moon in which they don't analyze with their head these Divine realities. They don't try to place a logic onto this understanding. As a result they've shut their head and they've magnified the power of their heart and as a result their face is shining lights of the moon because their face is merely a, a reflection of the light that exists within their heart. Everybody else you see their face are dark because it's filled with the waswas and thinking and analyzing and, and every type of false light that they're trying to put into their head to be illuminated. And, and that's not the purpose of the head, the head was not to think, the head was just to shut off and only think for dunya. The head was to be only a passenger on this journey into the heavens, 
not to be the captain, the heart is the captain. When the heart is guiding the servant into the Divine, the head will begin to reflect all of its lights. And that's why then these professors and these Einsteins when they grow old they become senile and Allah shuts off their head and they become feeble in age like they're a two-year-old baby because they use the head too much and they try to illuminate their path by their head, their books and their knowledges. And they had never illuminated the heart which was the real source of power, not the temporary reading and talking, reading and talking. So when their heart has no energy then they become transgressed and they go back into a feeble state. We pray Allah protect us and bless us and illuminate our hearts and that our heart be sufficient to carry our entire wujud and our being so that always that illumination comes out. That's why these awliya when they become older they even become more powerful because their heart if, if, if they're keeping pure and keeping clean their heart is getting closer and closer to the Divine and their ilum is coming out stronger and stronger inshaAllah. So the maqam al-fardani is all this path's teaching. That's why they have the rising sun of the west, this is all the knowledges of that reality. That what is this sun, what is this path of the moon, what is the reality of the sun? Then when they have the, the book on Yaseen, this is from the heart of Prophet And that everything of, of Qur'an its heart is the heart called Yaseen. So it becomes the manzal Qur'an and the treasure chest of all these realities that are coming out from that, uh, that reality. And then the, the kitab on the heart is the house of Allah and all whom exist within the house of Allah So all of these courses that have been set by these awliyaullah is from that understanding from the highest levels of sainthood, not the beginning levels of sainthood. And that, that, that knowledge to save us and dress us and prepare us for the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi And that's why we should all be qamarun and that's why they don't care what the wife says, what anyone says. This is not the path in which to follow people. You follow your heart, you follow the command of Allah and you follow the command of Sayyidina Muhammad the family role is the man is the imam in the home and the man has to be the imam where he tells the family what they're going to do. The family doesn't tell him what to do and that's the problem. When the imam is, is uh, emasculated, when his manhood is taken away and he's no longer capable being of imam, then imagine that family is like going off a cliff because there's no imam, there's no one guiding anything and everything will be based on, on emotions. And that's not what Prophet brought and this is the danger in the last days is that everybody yell and scream with emotions and trying to manage the family in a panic and pandemonium. When Allah opens for men to sit and connect and learn your deen, it's a safety for the days that are coming. We said that while well, this internet is on and they have a program called Dark Winter which they have forecasted that they would cut the power and as a result oh they would say, oops internet is also cut. So they, are, they have plans, if a day should come in which there is no internet then Allah's rahmah and mercy He inspires men. Why so many men are inspired to listen and watch this show? and watch these teachings because Allah want them to be strong imams, safeguard their families, safeguard with a, a connection and a love for Allah a love for Sayyidina Muhammad that the fires and the lights and the connection has to come to their hearts. If you take away the imamness of the home 
there's nobody guiding. And if nobody's guiding then what Prophet taught, shaitan is the imam in the home. If you don't have an imam then who is your imam? Shaitan is the imam. And that's what you cannot have, you cannot you know b- b- listen and, and the, the woman try to take control of everything, tell him not to do, not to do this, not to pray, not to do these things. And then that's why the teacher comes back that I'm being sent to connect with them, I'm being sent to be trained by them, all inspiring me to watch these teachings so that I can learn my deen and learn it in a way that it has power. This is a, a knowledge that has power and realities and as a result of learning their deen, making their connection, your home is safe from difficulties, from calamities. And when sickness comes Allah by the blessing of the imam in the home will lessen everything. If there's no blessing in the imam, if the sickness come it's spread to everything and everybody in, in bad trouble. When a burglar comes it spreads to everything and everybody in trouble. These are difficult, difficult times that are coming and Allah inspire people towards protection. We got an email that a young child was having difficulty every night would look at a window in the house and would see two red eyes staring at them. And the mother was panicking and father was panicking and they emailed and they got the advice that immediately get the taweezes and put taweez all over the house. They put their taweezes over the house, they said another incident had come where all of a sudden they saw instead of two eyes it was a man that had manifested as if he was coming for the window to break in and for some reason he got very frightened and he had run away. And so alhamdulillah this is the, this is the teaching of awliyaullah that these taweezes, these realities, these teachings they have many un- unimaginable benefits. And that's why Allah inspiring people learn from them, understand from them, to, 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 to understand what tools they've been given from the heavens for these days. They're not a people unequipped, we've had these tools for 20 years but nobody wanted them. But now they seem to be a very hot commodity when people are being eaten and their toes are being eaten and things are crawling all over their homes and around their neighborhoods. So it's just a matter of building your ship and waiting. Some awliya they they know you know five minutes ahead of time, some know 15-20 years ahead of time. So alhamdulillah this ship has been built and all of its tools are are waiting and uh, alhamdulillah nothing been caught off guard and just a matter of people to hear the call of Allah and hasten towards safety and success inshaAllah.